What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. Excited about today's guest, I have the founder of Crypto Finally, which is a fun YouTube channel which does everything related music videos about cryptocurrencies. I'm here with Rachel, who's the founder. How's it going, Rachel? Hi, I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here with you. Um, Good to have you here. Absolutely. Uh, we met out in uh, Miami during uh, Miami Blockchain Week, right, for a national uh, TNABC is how we always refer to it on the internet, um, North American Bitcoin Conference. It takes me a second to get on my acronyms. I'm sorry, everybody. Um, but we were out there doing that power hour, and I'm actually really happy to be reconnecting with you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny because when I met you, I had never heard about your channel, which I'm super sad. And uh, I got to play around uh, right after I spoke to you, and I was like, this is really fun stuff, and I'm glad that there's a, first of all, first and foremost, I love the fact that in crypto, there's individuals from every different walks of life who are coming into the space and infusing all their creative energy, their tech background, whatever it is, like everyone's coming in and just like getting their hands dirty, and you did just that. So can you tell us how you came up with that idea? of starting a music video channel, just all crypto related? Well, okay, so I've always written parody or comedy songs of some degree about things in my life. Um, this has been something that I've always wanted to do and it's always uh, sounded the way it sounds, uh, my dream of creating comedy songs. <laughs> um, I got introduced to a cryptocurrency um, during consensus of this last year, actually. So I do come from a mainstream production background. Um, I've worked in production my entire life. I have friends who work in production. Um, they were out here for consensus. I started going to events with them. Um, they actually work on YouTube. They have an educational channel called Kryptonauts. It's still running. Um, and I kind of got to see what was going on in the space and the people in the community and blockchain. Uh, I really loved what was happening. And I thought that there was a special sort of niche there for uh, what I do with my music and um, a way to sort of collaborate and uh, promote adoption within the space. Um, I'm really excited it worked as well as it did when it was first uh you know, my idea to make uh, songs about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. <laughs> and I'm telling all my like uh, non-coiner friends and I'm like, trying to explain to them, no, no, this is this is a really cool community. There are a lot of people who are really driven, really hardworking, um, and I really want to get in on this. Uh, it sounded silly, but I'm really uh, surprised and sort of enthralled by the way the community has accepted what I'm doing um, and has really latched onto it. Uh, I'm glad that we can have fun media in the space, and I'm really, really glad that we can connect on this level. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, a song that I was watching, which I think went viral, was the Bitcoin Britney song. Do you have um, any other songs that went viral? I mean, no, you had a few others, but I saw so, that one and I was like, wow, she's got balls. I would never do that. I'm too shy. I don't, I don't know if I'd refer to myself as having gone um, viral. I think that might have gone semi-viral, uh, the one you're referring to. So I went to the New York Stock Exchange, um, scantily clad. I had these uh, thigh-high sequin uh, boots and I may or may not have climbed up on the Federal Memorial right outside of the Stock Exchange and crawled across superimposing Brad Garlinghouse throwing Ripple. But <laughs> um, that I, that was super fun. That was actually the first live action video that I shot. Um, I went there. I had actually my makeup artist shooting the video. So it was me and my friend Gigi um, shot on my iPhone. And I warned her before we went that it was very possible security was going to tell us to leave. Did I they? was surprised. No, they I enjoyed it. I actually have a couple like background shots with the security guys laughing behind me. Um, some of the raw footage of that uh, day I cannot watch. But um, <laughs> there were hundreds of people actually there filming on their cell phones as well, which was pretty cool. And like I fear what they might have, but I never actually saw it on the internet, which is great. Um, 
viral. I think my video that had the furthest reach was the BitPay Black Friday video. I don't know if you saw that one. No, I didn't. Um, it's sort of a compilation video, so I have several different people singing along to this uh, remix of Rebecca Black's Friday, um, which we all know as this sort of, I guess, annoying song that got really, really popular. Um, I believe it was because Usher was in the video, um, and it was just totally ridiculous. But anyway, I remade that video and called it Bit Pay instead of Friday, um, and I released it, and it got a lot of traction really fast. Um, people thought that BitPay actually created that video. Uh, there was this whole scandal on the internet about like BitPay's marketing team, like hiring this channel crypto finally. <laughs> It got mentioned in The Independent, uh, which is kind of cool as a mainstream thing. I got into, in my first month of existing as Crypto Finally channel, this like weird scandal with the Independent and BitPay's PR team, which was really fun, and they were both actually really supportive at the end of things. It was just a lot of mass confusion. Um, independent picked up on the Internet's decision that BitPay had created my video, basically, um, and wrote an entire article about how BitPay's marketing team came out with this video. And believe it or not, it is really, really hard to get in touch with the independent uh, from the United States. Okay. <laughs> I had a lot, a lot of trouble. And finally, I got on the phone with this um, nice, very nice older gentleman uh, who very quickly made the change. But it took me like two weeks to get there. Um, just I think for the nature of news and press, which is a lesson that I learned that day. <laughs> so how did you come up with all these ideas? Like I know you have, like you mentioned, a production background and you knew, a, you know, a lot of folks in the YouTube arena, but what sort of gave you these ideas of just testing it out? Um, oh, wow. What well, was your inspiration, I guess? <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. Um, so... I just kind of wanted to find an outlet in which I could be creative um, and, and share that with other people. Um, I, I come up with like little songs and like diddlies in my head. So I do all the lyrics and stuff myself. Uh, when I was working with my old channel, Kryptonauts, um, my friend Gio, who's actually my uh, business partner right now for another company, we make animations for blockchain companies. But he actually had an idea. He was like, Rachel, you make these parody songs. And he was like, what if you make a love song to Vitalik? Um, <laughs> To the tune, to the tune of "I Will Survive" by Gloria Gaynor, and that's all he said. That's all he said to me, and I was like, "Hmm, this is back in August." Um, so I wouldn't launch my channel until November, and believe it or not, this song does exist. Uh, it's called "I Will Derive." It's really, really good. Um, I'm just trying really hard to get the vocals right because Gloria Gaynor, I don't want to get it wrong. Um, so the song sits in production anyway. So Gio had this idea. I was like, "That sounds awesome." I whipped the song out we were like this is really really cool um and then in september uh we considered what if i actually just make it its own channel um what if i really target this niche uh because what we were doing there was so educational and what i wanted to do here was uh really rooted in entertainment and while there is education um in it uh it's a completely different ballgame from what we were doing there uh so that's when i decided to sort of branch off and I started just going with a lot of songs. I had a lot of ideas that did work and didn't work. Um, and I'm still holding on to a few that I've had for that length of time. So uh, there does exist uh, Crypto Finally's I Will Derive. And um, it's it's pretty interesting. <laughs> so, I mean, it's so admirable that you've been getting such, or that you've essentially been able to come into this community so quickly, get such positive feedback. Uh, what is kind of um, your, where do you want to take this next? Like what, what, uh, what are some of your ambitions and goals? Oh man, that's rough. So <laughs> um, I'm 26, so which is overwhelming to me in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, my ambitions and goals, I want to really grow what I'm doing here. I know that for certain, um, I want to, I have these three things. I want to grow, I want to improve. 
um, and I want to create, right? And so in my mind, it's hard for me to do all three at once. Um, I need to take them in steps. So I need to improve before I can create, and I need to create before I can grow, or I need to grow before I can improve, um, or uh, you know, uh, grow before I can create, or create before I can grow. And um, I really want to stick in those three domains. What's been going on here, I think, is really amazing, and I really just want to keep making media, keep getting it out there, um, contribute to what's going on in the space and adoption. Uh, I'm really excited, honestly, to be on the ground floor of something that I feel is so big right now. Um, and the more that I can participate and the more people that I can meet and expand in the community, um, the better. And that's honestly where I'm headed right now. Um, I'd obviously like to make more media. That's part of the creation. Uh, but in order to do that, I need to grow. And I need to really integrate myself in the community, which is uh, the steps that I've been taking recently. So I've been out to a lot of conferences. I was out in Miami. I was just out in East Denver. Um, I've been speaking at the Bitcoin Center in New York. I'll be out there next week. Um, then I'm going to be headed out to uh, New Orleans, uh, March 15th. I'm a keynote speaker uh, for the Cryptocurrent Conference talking about media and millennials. Then I'm headed out to Bitcoin Ben's world's largest crypto meetup in uh, Blanco, Texas, which should be pretty fun. Um, there's going to be a lot of influencers out there who I know a lot of good friends with. I hate to use the word influencer. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, content creators. Uh, it's just such a new space. We don't know what to call ourselves really. Um, and, um, That'll be fun. I'm headed straight from there to Los Angeles where I'm going to hit up Security Token Summit, Crypto Invest Summit, and Blockchain Solutions Summit. Um, then I'm going to head out to San Francisco. So I'm really just out here trying to spread the word um, and uh, do what I do best, which is uh, have fun and um, you know get to meet people and integrate with people like you, which is really all it's about. <laughs> so what do you think we can do as a community to help spread awareness? I mean, you're already doing that in your own way by creating content and being out there, but what do you think we can all do to sort of like help each other out and uh, continue as far as mass adoption? Because I feel like, you know, when I talk to my friend, well, I mean, obviously there's my, there's my crypto friends, but my non-crypto friends, when I'm trying to explain to them the potential and Bitcoin and whatnot, it's just like it's such still like such negative feedback. It's, it's great to see that crypto in general is continuing to be in the news between JP Morgan now coming out, they want to do their own coin. There was an article that came out a few days ago about Facebook also interested in moving into the space. So obviously that should get people's attention. However, what I, I mean, and obviously like when it comes to like coins, whatnot, like I feel like that's a separate discussion, but what do you think we can do to really help our friends who are not into the space to really understand the opportunities? I think that um, it's interesting. I think there's like a really, uh, like a sort of a clear wall there because as soon as things start ramping up and it gets in the news, people get really excited about it. And all of a sudden, all of our friends are asking us all about Bitcoin. How are people making money? What's going on there? Um, and, and you're right. It is hard during a bear market when people report that Bitcoin's dead, people hear that Bitcoin's dead. Um, and I think it's honestly, uh, coming from this perspective, that's more about, there is a community here. Um, it's a real uh, active space. People are building on the technology. Um, there's something big to come. And that, yes, there, money is included if we have a bull run, if something like that happens. But um, that it's really about the space. And we look to things like pop culture, uh, which I think is really interesting right now. Like if you look at Eminem's new album on Kamikaze, he talks on Not Alike, he actually raps about Bitcoin. Um, which is sort of phenomenal if you look at where we were in the space, you know, even just a few years ago. There, uh, I was sitting in a bar in Soho, um, right off Broadway, and a song started playing, and I swear he's talking about cryptocurrency. I'm like, what is going on? And um, I, this, I don't know, this was like a couple months ago, and I put it on my Shazam, and Op pumps this song called Satoshi Nakamoto by Grammatic. I don't know if you've ever heard it. Um, but it's small things like this uh, that are starting to really get people integrated and excited. It's I'm sitting in a bar listening to a song, talking to my friend in cryptocurrency, and neither of us are believing they're actually playing a song about cryptocurrency because we live in what feels like such this deranged bubble um, that doesn't exist outside of us. But I also think, you know, as soon as we start breaking through that bubble and we start seeing the stuff that's going on the outside and connecting it to what's going on here, um, it really does start to share the space and get people excited about what's going on. Definitely. So where can we find you on social media?
I just lost you. Sorry, you froze. It's okay. Where, yeah, you did. Where can we find you on social media? Obviously, Crypto Finally on YouTube, but where are you the most active? Um, so Crypto Finally, I'm on Twitter, um, so I tweet the most often. I'm also on Instagram at Crypto Finally. Um, I have a few other channels where I post uh, sneak previews and small interviews that I do on my DTube. Um, but you can find all those links through my Twitter, which I post on every single day. And if you want to reach out to me on Twitter, I will get back to you. Um, I have time on my hands. <laughs> and if you see at her conference, make sure to go say hi to her. She's a great gal. Um, <laughs> Come say hi to me. I would love to talk to anybody. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, super excited. Thanks for coming into the show, Sarah. It was great having you. Okay, I appreciate it. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and make sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher. See you next week. Bye.